Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, 3D title and graphic animations in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, I'm gonna look at this from an editor's point of view, not from someone who's doing motion graphics in After Effects because, I mean, After Effects is king, but I'm just concentrating on the simplest way to create um, next to real time, if not real time animations directly inside Premiere Pro. There is no real 3D world inside here, so I'm kind of faking it, but I'm taking an old effect and I'm fixing it by changing the scale. Let's go have a look. All right. Here is a typical animation where we've got some floating um, videos and you can see them changing in perspective and moving into position. Now, I'm gonna start with just a basic um, animation and go to my project and create a simple rectangle. I'm gonna create a color mat and I'm gonna make this 500 pixels by 300 pixels and make this red click OK and I'll call this 500 by 300. Drag this into my timeline and there it is. It's sitting there. If I double click on it, I can move this around and animate this anyway in uh, 2D. But what if I wanted this to swivel around like I was doing with the other graphics? In the effects, if you type in basic, you'll see basic 3D. And just like usual, if I have this selected, I just have to double click. And you'll see a few choices like swivel, tilt, distance to image, specular highlight, and preview. This, let's go from the bottom, draw preview for wireframe. That's basically the days of computers being too damn slow. We'll never touch that. The specular highlight, I'll show you what this looks like. It can work, but there is no control for the amount of specular highlight or the intensity. Distance to image is going to be our magical one. I'll show you that in a second, but let's just try to swivel this around. And the first thing you might notice is that as you swivel this around, it's incredibly, it looks like it's shot on a wide angle lens. There's a ton of perspective there. Now, just as an example, let's jump over to After Effects and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to create a new solid. And that's also 500 by 300 pixels. Um, if you're not familiar with After Effects, all you have to do is click on this button and we've now enabled 3D. In fact, I'll show you the rotation. Rotation right now just has one control. As soon as I turn that on, now I get three. Now look at the difference here. Look at how that moves in 3D. It just seems to be more accurate to a typical camera lens. If we go back over to here, yikes. I mean, a lot of times people would abandon that because it's just too unnatural. It doesn't look right. So what's the, uh, the tip? Well, to me, it's the distance to image because you'll notice as, if, as I change the distance to image, it looks even more wide angle. Oh, well, if that's the case, what if I push that sucker all the way to the back? Well, now when you swivel it, it looks more like After Effects, but it's way far away. Hmm, what do we do? Well, if we go to our um, scale and scale this up, we can scale it, but look at the edges. They're now soft because we've scaled this 800%. The swivel looks better, but we now have a blown up object. So how do we get around that? Well, instead of using a smaller image, a smaller mat, I'll show you over here. I've created one. I did two tests, one with a 5,000. Uh, so I, I basically uh, hit it by 10 times larger, 5,000 by 3,000. And of course, when I drag that on, it's gigantic. And when we apply the effect, let's grab our basic 3D again. Now watch what happens when I push the distance to image. And I move the distance to image back. Now when I swivel this, ah, looks better. But then I did another test and I thought, well, let's try this at half of that. So this is 2,500 uh, by 1,500. Same thing, apply the 
basic 3D effect and change the distance to image and now swivel this. Oh lordy! Look at that. I'm not touching scale. So scale is still at 100%. I'm not touching that at all. I'm strictly just touching that distance to image, which really does affect that wide angle distortion effect that's going on. So if we go back to my animation, how did I do this with video? Well, each one of the videos, I didn't want to blow up because if I blow that up, it's going to get soft. So you'll notice these are green, meaning that they're sequences. And each one of these sequences, if we go to the info panel, if I'll click on this one, you'll see that my sequence is 2500 by 1500. And I'll double click on this and open it up. And I've blown up the video. This is an HD video that's stuck in here. So when I animate this and change the position of the camera, now it will look okay because I'm scaling that back down. And at the end, I scale that back up to HD resolution. It looks absolutely perfect, just like that. And the same thing uh, with that text. Right now, I, I'm taking that title and I'm tilting that. So if I remove my keyframes here and reset that, if we swivel that at the same time, now this is where I will go to my position and move that down, you'll just see overall it now looks much better and instead of that wacky crazy thing, it looks a lot like what you would do in After Effects. Okay, so don't discount that basic 3D. It's basic, it's fake, there's no real world, there's no access point. I can't move the access onto one edge. I have to go to After Effects for that. But for a lot of quick moving animations and virtual 3D kinds of things, basic 3D with a little bit of scale change and distance to camera can do a wonder to your animations. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button to Video Revealed. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there is a special link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best. Thank you.